We have the new LCI BMW, and today we're going to show you every single thing and why this is the better alternative to the rivals, starting off with a little performance like this. BMW of Wesley Chapel gives us the 2023 BMW X7 xDrive 40i in Alpine white. But is the increased power and the changes that we receive better than the 2022 or your rivals like your Cadillac Escalade, your Mercedes Benz, and your Land Rover Range Rover, is the LCI the one to go? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. BMW X7 LCI starts off with a double face, reworked BMW LED headlamps and daytime running, the new illuminated kidney grille, the gloss black on the lower active kidney grille, and your large hood that pushes out those fenders. M Sport package includes these 21 inch double spoke bi-colored wheels, roof rails in the high gloss, M steering wheel, shadow line exterior trim, Alcantara headliner. The in-brake calipers in blue for pistons in the front. Up to a 23-inch wheel you can get. M Sport Package Pro adds your M Sport exhaust system. The side blades get the gloss black that run down the side. Gloss black on all of your window treatment and on the roof rails. Looks very aggressive comparing it to the prior. Weight distribution has changed to 47.9, 52.1, and it's not going to be as athletic as the 2022. Your curb weight has increased to 50 5,417 pounds, 3.64 axle ratio, double wishbone front suspension, a multi-link rear suspension, both the front and the rear will get your air suspension, which is standard. The length has increased by 0.3 inches to 203.6 inches. Same wheelbase at 122.2 inches. The Range Rover Land Rover will be the shortest. Otherwise, this is actually shorter than the Benz, than the Cadillac, even that Wagoneer. BMW keeps that traditional look on the side, so it's still boxy and elegant. The height has increased by over an inch. The length has increased by 0.3 inches, something that irritates me a little bit. Key fob in your pocket and it started. You're about five feet away. It just continuously beeps the horn. One thing I dislike is here you have this extra piece. I just kind of wish it was more cleaned up in only one area. LED tail lamps that are revised, so I do like how they've given us the element where this has enough of a change to make me want to get a 2023, especially with the power increase that we will go over. Increasing in towing, the lower bit gets super aggressive, even on a standard trim. Power lift gate to go inside the 12.8 cubic feet. Underneath, you will have some storage and you can put the cover so you don't have to have the third row up. You also have the cover here so it blocks everything. Very easy to take it out. You can Adjust all the seats in the back. Split fold the third row bench at a 50-50 split in the rear. Increasing cargo to 48.9 cubic feet. We have a 12 volt charger on this side and a little storage pocket here. The captain's seats pushed all the way will increase your cargo to 90.4 cubic feet. It is the same exact cargo space as the prior. 40 more horsepower and 67 pound feet more. Let's go inside, start it up so you can hear that exhaust note. and they back the performance with a 3.0 liter BMW twin power turbo inline six cylinder producing 
375 horsepower and 398 pound-feet of torque that's paired to an eight-speed sports automatic transmission achieving 21 to 25 mpgs that's good for a zero to 60 around 5.8 seconds with a quarter mile around 14 seconds so for the lci your performance numbers are basically the same as the 22 model it's going to be faster than the gls it's going to be faster than the cadillac slower than the range rover but faster in the quarter mile because of the increase to curb weight the added horsepower and torque is definitely going to be something that should alter the drive the weight distribution has been changed so some of the geometry of the vehicle will also ride a little bit different standard air suspension should take care of any impurities in the road let me know in the comments what you think about the lci 2023 bmw x7 as we go into the interior go over the tech and take this for our test run starts off with 20-way power seat adjustment for the front occupants Heated seats, black full Milano leather. You can option ventilated and massage seats. The dashboard gets the new X7 badging that illuminates with the gloss black all over. Your new air vents in the center and on the side. You have the leather wrap for the dashboard, heads up display, two panel screen that wraps around that's out of the iX. A 14.9 inch with navigation. It is touchscreen. We have the pinch and the swipe, click onto the home button. This is your quick wedges that you can tailor any which way you like. Click these four little squares, and this is gonna show you that you have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming, Bluetooth audio, Wi-Fi hotspot. Click into your driver settings here, and you can change the chassis layout to make it as sport-derived as you want, or, you can just put it onto the Eco Pro and you can make it as eco-friendly as you want. Push it into reverse with the new gear switches. You have a 360 degree reverse camera with full trajectory. Click on these little camera icons and you can see everything around you for any obstructions. You have your assistant view here, so you'll have your front and rear parking sensors. Click into the more, and you can do your 3D view here, but you would click onto these little icons to go all around you, or you can do your gesture. Click back into the more, you'll have your trailer view, so this lines up for your toe. Click back, you'll have your car wash view, like always, to show the full trajectory in the front. And on the gauge cluster, it's a 12 point three inch will have your front and rear parking sensors. You'll have an array of information for the driver. When you click onto the BC, it will change everything into the center there. When you change the mode, so you put it into sport, you'll see the red. Comfort, you'll see it more of a silver. Eco Pro will be blue. Three spoke leather wrap steering wheel. It's in spec heated multi-function with the paddle shifters. Going down, you'll have your cup holders with a USB and a 12 volt, your wireless charging pad, an area here that you can put another phone, your iDrive 8, and you'll have the gloss black and the satin aluminum around everything. Your driving mode select and the new gear knob here. Everything is going to have the ambient lighting. So onto the dash, on the door panels, soft materials, open up inside. It is a deep storage. Going onto your door panel with the Harman Kardon upgraded sound system, soft materials throughout with the ambient lighting, one touch up and down for all of your windows, memory seats for the driver and passenger, a large storage pocket that opens up deep right here. For the second row, I'm at 39.9 inches of headroom, 37.6 inches of leg room. You have the same interior spec as a 2022. The nice thing about BMW is you also have all the luxury that you would have. So power everything, even for your sunshades there, which makes it a lot easier because I can control everything. Your dual climate control settings with your air vents, two USB-C ports, a 12 volt cup holders. You can easily fit, I would say a 32 ounce. Storage beyond both of the front seats with another USB port and a connection that you can put an iPad or a tablet. With your air vent on the side pillar, the door panel, get your everyday materials, but it's all soft materials. You'll have the ambient lighting right through here. One touch up and down for every single thing. A large storage pocket in case with the soft materials and you get the M badging. These seats are also power adjustable. So if I move this up all the way, the back seat is going to have a substantial amount of room and I can still fit here. If I recline this back and move it all the way back, 
It's going to be a little bit tight for someone my dimensions at six foot three. However, it's still doable because you have the pass through. If I would just move this up and I'm all the way back, it's actually a more easier fit for somebody in the third row. And if I adjust it to the center, everybody is happy. For the third row, I'm at 36.6 inches of headroom, 33.3 inches of legroom. I fit without any issues except for on both sides, you will have this little hump that takes away from quite a bit of feet space. So I don't like that. But what I do like is both sides get a USB-C port and you have a cup holder that you can fit a 16.9 ounce, a 20 is gonna be tight and you get the ambient lighting. So the luxury is still in the back. The window is more squared off. Here would be for your climate control and your heated seats for the third row so you feel like you're in coach even in the back and at six foot three you could do two adults my dimensions taking the new bmw x7 lci out for our test run increase of 40 horsepower to 375 increase of torque 398 that's a lot of power underneath the hood of this twin scroll turbocharged engine the hood still projects itself the same, so you'll have that luxury image. It's very long and flat. I do like that. When you sit in the seat, you kind of sit a little bit overwards. I feel that this is derived because of the IX screens that's laid out in front of me because it kind of makes you feel like you're more centered than towards the door panel. So it does have a little bit of a different feeling in that. But with the iX screen, I'm actually pretty shocked. I didn't think that it would fit so seamless in this vehicle, even though this is the largest vehicle that they make. I thought that, you know what, it's gonna come out and look like an eyesore. So I am pretty surprised of how it is. I'm not a big fan of everything being inside. It's 67 pound feet more torque. We got it in sport mode. Let's see how we do. And your brakes. She's quick. The weight distribution has changed. It is off just a touch. It's not a huge difference in the sense where you're going to really notice it. because You're not really going to be doing a lot of cornering with this type of vehicle. Four corner air suspension is awesome. So both axles take care of that, but you do have some dynamics and look at this thing go. visibility in the front the windscreen is oval so something that I like for performance vehicles switch it into comfort it's going to change the ride height it's going to change the firmness in your seats so I like how BMW does that the a pillars are a little bit larger in the sense that it makes it feel ultra sporty so I like the fact that they're going this route because when you're looking at Cadillac they're going more technology here you're implementing the technology too don't get me wrong the difference though is you still keep the performance look in the interior that's what BMW is doing very similar to Mercedes-Benz Land Rover Range Rover is also trying to implement the same thing ambient lighting throughout and the air vents in the center are not as potent as the prior. Now there is three things I like and three things that I dislike. Is this recording? Huh. Take two. Now there is three things I like and three things that I dislike. Is anything more than that? I'd be buying this X7 to start off with. The front, very dominant and performance driven. It has a similar idea as the Genesis. So you have a quad LED setup. It's not the same as Genesis. The second thing that I like is they did not forget about the charging ports. You have them everywhere. We're going to see the performance now. The sound dampening is good for a long journey. You're not gonna have any trouble with hearing too much road noise. These are 21 inch wheels. This is more of your standard wheel. They do option a 23 inch, like I said, on the exterior. The last thing that I like about the vehicle, most of the time I would say the power. However, you're still getting the same zero to 60 and quarter miles. So I'm not really gonna complain or talk good about that, but the towing is where it's at. You've increased to over 7,000 pounds, which is awesome because now you are capable to tow a larger boat with this vehicle 
and it's not going to be any issues because you have the extra power underneath the hood. Three things that I dislike starts off on the exterior where you fill up your fuel. You have that little plastic piece next to you where you fill it up. I just think that they should completely close that up. It just makes me feel like they went a little bit inexpensive and this car isn't portraying an inexpensive MSRP. The second thing that I dislike is when you're outside and you got the car running, you walk away five, six feet, the horn just starts beeping, automatically locks the doors. Obviously, these are things you could probably change in your settings. It's just, it's a irritating thing. And taking me to the last thing is going into these settings multiple pages they tried to make it so easy that it becomes a little bit complicated and when you have a lot of apps that's what happens you really only need apple carplay android auto navigation and just put the climate control on the exterior your heated ventilated seats this one doesn't have ventilated seats even your massage seat settings put everything outside that way we don't have to worry about charging per month fees comfort in this vehicle comparing it to the rivals even if you're looking at the grand wagoneer this one's going to be more comfortable the way the seats are you have more seat adjustments comparing it to the cadillac i like the way Cadillac is. When you get into the second and third row, it's also very user-friendly. It's a little bit quicker to get into the third row because you don't have the power seat adjustments. This one has sped up a touch, but it's not a significant amount. I do like that you get power seat adjustments in the second row because the only other vehicle that really does that is Mercedes and Land Rover. And when you get to those prices, the options of those can go up to one fifty dollars to $200,000, depending on features, obviously, but this is under $100,000. So when you're looking at an all-round package deal, this is cheaper than a Grand Wagoneer, and you're pretty much fully loaded. Now, obviously, you have the option apps in which you will start paying for those. It's not necessarily a huge deal because for me, like I said before, navigation, Apple CarPlay, I don't have to go too much in depth. That's really all you need. You have the performance behind it. You have more than enough luxury and everyone can fit in every row and you don't feel like you're sacrificing because you have your charging ports, you have windows all around you, you have the Alcantara. The options that you get in this one that I'm showing today really makes this vehicle stand out and gives you a perfect blend of luxury and performance. And the turn radius at a stop point Gonna get about two in a part lane, let's rock and roll. Even in eco mode, you're not going to have any problem. The power that's underneath the X7 has done a good job. The main thing I would say when you're in eco mode, you really have to floor it and then it'll tack up. Because when you're in sport mode, you just push it and it's ready to liven up. I'd like to thank BMW of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2023 BMW X7 for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, I don't know what you're waiting for. Click the next video, the subscribe button. Check out the Instagram, the merchandise, the website, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.